Uh, good afternoon, friends. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you again to the second quarter uh, ending March 24 uh, conference call. Uh, I want to take this opportunity to wish all of you a very happy upcoming Diwali season and a fabulous new year. Uh, let me now take you through the key highlights uh, of our performance. Uh, we reported uh, an overall uh, half yearly profit, including OCI, of uh, 12.27 billion rupees, which is up by 130% year on year. Our consolidated revenues for the second quarter stood at 14.16 billion, up by 30% year on year. Consolidated operating profit after tax uh, during the second quarter was at 2.88 billion, up by 26% year on year. Net worth stood at 74.6 billion, up by 25% year on year. And our fund based investment books stood at 54.7 billion, uh, with a cumulative uh, since inception X IRR of 17.5%. Turning to our segmental performance, starting with the capital markets, uh, we had the highest ever quarterly capital market business profit after tax at 1.8 billion in the quarter, up by 33% year on year, led by continued uh, traction and improvement in our market share across the cash and the futures and option segment. Our retail cash ADTO market share grew by uh, 121 bits year on year and nearly 90 bits quarter on quarter to 7.1% now. Our retail F&O premium market share stood at 7.5%, up by 30 bits quarter on quarter. Uh, retail F&O uh, ADTO market share grew by 74 basis points year on year and by 26 basis points quarter on quarter to 4.6 percent. Uh, and our overall ADTO grew by 137 percent year on year and 27 percent quarter on quarter. NSE active clients uh, stood at 7.98 lakhs as of September end and the market share was 2.4 percent. We acquired uh, 191,000 odd clients during the second quarter. Our distribution AUM grew by 24 percent, YUI to nearly 25,000 crores and our distribution net sales were about 6.19 billion uh, during the quarter. Our investment banking business has completed eight deals uh, during the second quarter. Turning to asset and wealth business, our profit after tax was uh, flat at 682 million, mainly due to low uh, AIF uh, upfront income because of change in AIF uh, regulations in April 23, and also increase in employee cost on account of continued uh, RM hiring in the wealth management business. Our asset management business uh, across mutual fund PMS and AIS stood at 551 billion, up by 18% uh, year on year. Our revenues for the quarter stood at 2.5 billion, up by 8% year on year. Our mutual fund AUM stood at 358 billion. Uh, strong performance across our active mutual fund schemes resulted in 110% YOI growth in our gross sales. Uh, we added uh, 210,000 new SIPs during the second quarter. This was up nearly three times uh, year on year and up by over 60% quarter on quarter. And our SIP flow market share improved by about half uh, percent on a year on year basis. Wealth management AUM grew by 91% year on year to 733 billion as on end of September. Strong net sales of uh, 23 billion in the second quarter uh, was up by 66% year on year. Our uh, wealth business uh, revenues grew by 11% year on year to 571 million. Private equity fee earning AUM uh, stood at uh, about 98 billion uh, across our private equity growth and real estate funds. In second quarter, revenues grew by 18% year on year at 461 million. We are pleased to share uh, also the launch of our six real estate funds, adding to our diverse, diverse investment uh, product suite. Turning to the home finance business, our focus continues to be to uh, meaningfully ramp up our sales force and also uh, simultaneously improve the productivity of the sales force. Uh, during the second quarter, we've expanded our sales team by onboarding 187 net sales RM, taking the total count to 629. Uh, we would like to grow this uh, RM count to uh, 1,000 from uh, 629 uh, by March 24 in another five months time. Our efforts to uh, boost productivity have started yielding results. 80% uh, of our logins are now approved within a span of two days. Additionally, our login to sanction ratio has shown an improvement of 42% in second quarter compared to 36% in the first quarter. Moreover, we've taken uh, significant steps to ramp up our sales distribution framework 
This includes setting up of a dedicated team catering to small and large distributors, our direct sales, uh, ensuring more efficient approach to our overall sales process. Uh, the housing finance business profits stood at 328 million in the second quarter, and disbursements during the quarter were at 2 billion, up by 112 percent quarter on quarter. Our objective is as we grow the sales team uh, meaningfully to a thousand count by uh, March 24 uh, on a quarter on quarter basis. This 2 billion disbursement number uh, in the coming quarters uh, should meaningfully uh, ramp up. Our AUM stood at uh, 37.2 billion, and with uh, the growth in disbursements after staying flat for a few years, we hope to grow the AUMs also strongly. Uh, I'll spend the last few minutes on how we look at the larger opportunity for uh, the multilateral financial services firm, uh, what choices we are making to tap this opportunity, and some milestones we are setting for ourselves for the foreseeable future. The big picture, as we see, uh, it is very exciting uh, for the overall financial business, uh, services business, and specifically for each of our businesses. Uh, over the last 25 years, India generated gross savings of about 13 trillion dollars. Uh, as per a study done by us, we expect this to rise meaningfully to over 100 trillion in the next 25 years, led by various factors, including an ascent in India's rank to top three uh, with a GDP of nearly 10x of the current size. We expect this uh, to throw up exponential opportunities for our capital market, asset and wealth businesses, in fact, each of our businesses. Uh, by the context, retail participation has increased immensely over the last decade with a strong addition in DMAT accounts, uh, which have grown nearly 3x in the last three years itself. This has led to a strong growth in retail broking uh, ADTO, which has grown by nearly 12x in the last three years. Uh, Mutral Swal, with its digital, uh, with its digital strategy, provides the best of both the worlds to its customers. Uh, during this uh, three-year period of uh, strong 12x growth in the market ADTO, we have in fact been able to grow our market share uh, by a third, from 3.6% uh, three years ago in September 20 to 4.6% now in September 23. Our retail market, sh cash market share during this uh, time period has gone up from 5.4%. Uh, to 7.1%. In FY23, the fiscal year ending March 23, Mutual as well is ranked among the top three in terms of brokerage revenues after Zidova and Angel. And our focus remains with all the initiatives that we are taking to further improve our market share in this rather fast growing market. Uh, with over uh, 2,500 experienced uh, advisors on our own roles, who apart from broking offer a bouquet of financial services solutions, uh, our distribution AUM has also grown strongly at a 30% CAGR in the last three years, from 11,000 crores in September 20 to over 25,000 crores in September 23. Uh, on a large client base of uh, over 4 million clients, the current cost sales ratio stands at under 6% and is a focus area for us. We are in the process of strengthening our team meaningfully here too. Uh, with an objective of uh, ramping up the AUM from the 25,000 core number in the coming years. Uh, with persistent efforts of the uh, Indian distribution community and AMFI, we have witnessed strong growth in industry SIP flows uh, and uh, mutual fund AUM too. In the last seven years, the monthly SIP flows have grown at a compounded 23% per annum and hit a record high of 15,300 crores uh, in the last month ending in the last month of September, uh, compared to a mere 3,000 crores seven years back. Uh, we believe our asset management business is well positioned to tap into this opportunity. Our QGLP investment philosophy with clear focus on high quality, high growth investments has been reoriented to deliver sustainable performance from highest performances earlier. This has resulted in improved fund performance across the board in turn driving the strong uh, flows and market share in both uh, the mutual fund and the alternate side. Uh, the net sales of our mutual fund business turned positive, backed by top quartile performances across the schemes like mid-cap, large and mid-cap, balance advantage fund. Our uh, market share in, uh, for the month of September for our uh, large and mid-cap fund was at nearly 4%, and for our mid-cap fund was nearly 8%. Uh, the overall uh, market share of the firm stands at a tad under 1%, and as you may have seen through the uh, presentation, we have uh, uh, we look 
to at least more than double this market share in the you know coming quarters. Uh, we've uh, also seen us. Uh, this will be supported by a strong recovery in our flagship scheme, our flex, uh, flexi cap, uh, on a one-year basis. Now uh, is generating positive alpha. Uh, also, in our SIT uh, side, we've seen our market share grow from 0.9 percent to uh, 1.4 percent, and there too, the drive is to you know take this uh, market share up meaningfully higher. On the alternate side, uh, 16 out of the 19 products that we manage for clients have outperformed the benchmark. And here again, our aim is to get back to the leadership uh, position in this case. Our volumes for AIF has picked up in the second quarter post the uh, regulatory changes uh, where there was a ban on upfront revenues in the first quarter. Our thematic fund founder strategy, which was launched just two quarters ago, has already garnered an AUM of over a thousand crores and has been impaneled uh, by various uh, you know, retail and wealth platforms. Uh, further, we've seen by the top three retail banks uh, of India for our AMC products in the recent past and are hoping to meaningfully ramp up our AUMs in the coming quarters with these banks. Turning to our private wealth business, we had really laid down our strategy to strengthen the relationship manager base in FY21 uh, uh, to reach 300 RMs by March 26. Uh, we are on course uh, for that plan and have added 39 RMs over the last six months to reach a RM count of 221 as of September 23. Uh, this number was 128 three years back. Investments in RM has brought down our uh, profit margins to 20, uh, operating profit margins to 25% compared to historical trend of 45%. We expect to recoup these margins uh, in the coming years as the newly onboarded uh, RM turn uh, profitable. Uh, just one uh, final context, uh, the net worth of the Mutra Luswal financial services firm has grown at a 23% compounded rate over the last eight years. And this is after an average dividend payout during this eight-year period of 26%. Uh, our focus to increase the net worth compounding uh, led by the turnaround in uh, the asset management business performance, the home finance business performance, the private wealth improvement in margins uh, and the investment banking business performance, uh, coupled with the improving IRR uh, that we hope to achieve in our investment book through the reallocation that we've proposed, uh, uh, make us very excited about uh, continued growth in net, net worth at a similar if not higher pace than the 23% compounding in the last eight years. Uh, we remain excited overall about all our businesses, and we are now open for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and 1 on the touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Namit Arora from Ingrowth Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, and thank you for a very detailed presentation and a very helpful uh, detailed remark. Uh, so I had two questions. Uh, one was around private wealth, uh, which is a sunrise sector. So we're given to understand that uh, there's a very uh, attractive private wealth opportunity, even in tier two, tier three, tier four towns, sort of the Bharat in India. So uh, would be grateful for your thoughts on your strategy, uh, if that's a priority for you, uh, you know, tier two, tier three, tier four, uh, what's your strategy uh, in private wealth to capture that opportunity? Uh, and so my second question was around the broking business. Uh, would be grateful for your thoughts on the discount broking opportunity. Uh, and given that your institution has had a, a, a very razor sharp focus on equity over many decades, uh, if there is a, a, a plan to leverage that, uh, and the way you intend to approach uh, the broking opportunity, uh, you know, if, if at all discount broking uh, is of interest. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, this is Ashish Shankar, Private Wealth. Uh, as uh, Navin mentioned in his opening remarks, we are adding bench strength in terms of RMs in the private wealth business. Now, these RMs uh, are also being added in tier two towns. Uh, like you rightly mentioned, there is a lot of liquidity events and wealth creation happening. 
uh, in towns outside of the major metros. So we've added Mysore this year. We've added uh, offices in three other locations in Gujarat. We will be uh, adding offices in UP very soon. Uh, similarly, we've added an office. I mean, we will be adding an office in Indore. Uh, we are looking to uh, onboard somebody in Raipur. So we have a, uh, whilst we are adding bench strength, uh, some of that bench strength is being added in tier two towns. So we, 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 we are cognizant of the opportunity and we'll be looking to capitalize on it. Got it. Very helpful. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. We'll take the next question from the line of Kunal. Kudania from DSP Asset Managers. Please go ahead. Good afternoon. This is Vivek Ramakrishnan. I had a, a couple of questions. First on your housing finance business, uh, where you're hiring, uh, but the AUM, if you see quarter on quarter, has been pretty stable. In fact, if you take it from the March quarter, it's, uh, it seems to be lower only, and you can see that. So uh, how does the cost income and when does the business uh, uh, become at a greater scale? And uh, any commentary on the GNPA and NPA number? So that will be question number one on the housing finance. I'll also ask a question on the other business. Uh, in the um, uh, capital, in the wealth management business, uh, we see that your interest income has gone, a lot, gone up a lot. Is it because of growth in loans, uh, loan size? Because if we subtract it from the total uh, uh, loan size, we see, uh, you know, there seems to be a big glass portfolio. So could you tell us? Uh, any color on how big it's going to get and, uh, I mean, where do you expect that to end? Thank you. So, on the housing finance side, so overall, uh, uh, as we said at the start of the call, so actually the idea is to ramp up our sales engine and uh, actually in quarter two, we've added almost uh, 190 sales RM and uh, there's a strong plan to add RMs uh, which would improve our throughput of disbursements. So, so far, if you see uh, overall quarter on quarter, uh, our disbursements uh, have uh, gone up from uh, almost 93 crores in Q1 to 193 crores in uh, Q2. So, there is uh, certainly improvement in our monthly run rate of disbursements uh, and uh, corresponding AUMs will also uh, tend to uh, grow up in line with that. Uh, on the cost to income side, uh, the question was, uh, uh, so basically there, uh, the cost to income would marginally go up uh, given that we are in hiring phase and in investment mode in this business. Uh, however, uh, uh, that would, if you see our other revenues have also started increasing, which would more than compensate uh, this uh, proportion uh, once uh, we have uh, our, our uh, the investment completes uh, in the next few months. So, uh, to that extent, uh, you will see the overall uh, ROA uh, getting stabilized. Uh, and coming to the asset quality, uh, uh, on quarter and quarter basis, uh, there is improvement in the overall collection efficiencies. So quarter two generally starts off at a lower efficiency. Uh, however, quarter, quarter one starts at a lower efficiency and quarter two we have catched up uh, with the efficiencies and the asset quality is very stable and we expect uh, to maintain the gross uh, NPA levels uh, below 2% and, and net NPA levels below 1.5%. Uh, that is on the uh, overall housing side and uh, coming to the uh, uh, question on the NII uh, on, on our capital market uh, side of the business. So there is uh, certainly a ramp up of our uh, lending book uh, that has happened uh, on a year on year basis and uh, which has led to improvement in the NII uh, and the overall uh, activity uh, improving uh, at the overall active clients level as well. So uh, the plan is to uh, keep this uh, overall, uh, as our equity has also been growing, if you see YOY at, at 25% uh, uh, on, on year on year basis and even 23% catch the roll last eight years, uh, so our, uh, that gives us a headroom to actually leverage uh, and uh, take the opportunity of, of those uh, uh, HNI clients where we can lend this money. And that's one of the reasons where we have focused to ramp up this uh, number. Uh, so we would be uh, maintaining this. Uh, overall leverage within uh, the overall 2x uh, x housing uh, cover. Uh, so accordingly, we'll be uh, growing with that uh, number in mind. So that's that's the point. Uh, to answer on the uh, discount uh, question in the last, uh, actually the la one of the last question was on the discount opportunity. So actually, uh, so given that our overall, uh, we have been, at, our strength is on advisory side of the business. So we have built the business uh, for advising to our customers. 
and uh, we are one of the largest number of advisors uh, in, in in our retail broking business. So we don't have any plans to go to the discount way. In fact, uh, uh, because there's a lot of uh, focus to improve our distribution and our overall NII uh, along with the brokerage revenues, uh, where advisors would not only uh, do broking but even do cross selling of all the uh, third party distribution products where we are actually ramp- ramping up a lot of team. So there is no plan uh, of us to go on the discount side uh, of the broking. Uh, th- thank you. So, uh, it, just uh, you know, on the home finance, your AUM has not increased despite the fact that they're saying the disbursements have increased. Is it that the runoffs and uh, disbursements are just matched with each other, or are you seeing some business transfer out? Or, um, you know, so when do we see the d- jump in AUM? I mean, you're, you're hiring people, so, uh, I mean, like, uh, I don't know whether you give a guidance, but if you look at March uh, uh, 24, where would you see the AUM and housing finance business? So, firstly, I think March 22 to March 23, if you see last financial year, the income had grown by 10%. Uh, coming to the current financial year, so, uh, you know, we have a, a component of almost 14% of the uh, construction finance book uh, on our portfolio. And in quarter two uh, of this year, uh, there is uh, more prepayments of that uh, part of the loan uh, because of the uh, faster inventory sell down and uh, to that extent there is almost uh, 50 crores of higher uh, prepayment which has happened on the uh, construction finance side of the book. That is one of the reasons. How the retail book has actually grown uh, on on quarter on quarter basis. Oh, that's great. Uh, thank you very much and wish you all the best and festive season greetings to you all. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one now. We'll take the next question from the line of Namit Arora from InGrowth Capital. Please go ahead. Oh, yes, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, and thank you uh, to the team for uh, addressing my question on discount broking. Uh, I had just one more question. This was to Sukesh. Uh, given that Sukesh and Shobit and Rajesh and the team are building the business probably as a sort of press charter, new charter, uh, I'm interested in Sukesh's thoughts on positioning in terms of your focus, let's say ticket size, products, geographies, uh, given that housing finance is a very large opportunity. So, you know, some thoughts on strategy and how you're prioritizing your time, management, bandwidth, and capital, uh, given that it's also a very competitive space. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Amit. Uh, the, the strategy right now is to uh, improve our uh, sales and distribution uh, bandwidth. Uh, and, in, and we have a, I mean, we have, right now, uh, we had an average, uh, uh, sales FOS of only about 500, which is very small compared to the uh, compared to the competitors, and we are uh, we are focusing on ramping that up to uh, to reach a level of 1,000 FOS by the end of the year. And uh, currently, the uh, strategy is to ramp up this FOS only in the existing branches, uh, which is I mean our branches we have about 110 branches which are spread across the country. Uh, the focus remains on the uh, on the affordable housing space uh, at the moment because uh, that's where the uh, larger opportunity uh, rises uh, uh, is existing, and uh, the focus of all the uh, prime uh, major banks is on the on the salary segment, uh, where the uh, where the yields and the uh, NIMS are much much uh, lesser. So our focus remains on the affordable segment, where the NIMS are higher, and the opportunity is uh, much larger, and the competition is also uh, also uh, uh, lesser, uh, less intense. So we uh, expect to uh, thrive in that uh, segment uh, uh, for the moment. And uh, grow our uh, uh, disbursement run rate to a much higher level in line with the uh, growth in our uh, uh, team size. Uh, that's the short term uh, 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 and near term plan as of now. Uh, thank you. That's very helpful, Sukesh. All the best to the entire team and warm festive greetings uh, and greetings for the new summer to the entire MOR team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Kajal from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, hi, sir. Congratulations on a good set of number eyes. Sir, a uh, couple of things. So, uh, right now we are seeing Azwa earlier was planned on only UPI platform and now it is expected to be in a different fashion. So, you see any impact there? And... Uh, Secondly, a uh, second question on uh, recently SEBI has spoken about uh, uh, exchanges, passback thing, that which is getting passed on to the brokers. So, 
So, what is the amount that we get as as a pass back, and what can be the impact of this in future? Thank you. So, uh, coming to the first point, but I uh, I think the uh, 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 implementation is going to be very slow, and it is not going to be compulsory to start off with. And with the uh, RBI implications on UPI and all, I think the impact will be comparatively very low, as well as what we feel. And for the client side. Which we are managing, I don't think we'll have a big impact on that. Uh, coming to the uh, discount on the transaction charges, I think uh, it's still a discussion thing which uh, NSC and the SEB has to come back on. Uh, but uh, if you look at our overall number of orders, the impact will be comparatively lower for us because we are looking at much high uh, high value clients. So the impact on that will be much lower compared to the discount brokers to that extent. Yeah. So how does this pass-back work uh, for a broker generally? It is basically number of orders, value. So basically, what happens is that uh, there is a slab system from the exchanges. So the client is charged at the highest slab, whereas uh, the broker gets charged at the lowest slab the moment he crosses the X volume. So the difference is to the credit of the broker. So typically for discount brokers, this number becomes very high. So they are getting the benefit of it uh, from the uh, being charged at the lowest slab, whereas they slab they charge the client at the highest slab. Okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hitesh Kulati from Hai Tong Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you sir for giving me the opportunity. So my question is on the capital market segment. So uh, if you look at the operating expenses here, especially employee expenses and commission expenses for the quarter, they are up by 30 percent plus, uh, almost in line with brokerage revenue, which is also up by 30 percent plus. So uh, can you throw some light on uh, what we are exactly trying to do here? Because we are adding a lot of employees in this segment, and commission expenses may be linked to brokerage revenue. Uh, the second question, sir, is on the interest income. Again, uh, interest income is up by 90%. So, is this mainly due to the margin funding uh, book accretion? Uh, and if you can throw some light on this as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, your second question on interest, if you could repeat. So, interest income is up by 90% for the quarter um, in the in the capital market segment, the broking segment. Yes, so what, so what's the question on that? So, so uh, can you throw some light on the margin funding book because this 90% increase is quite high. So just wanted to understand, is this due to yield increase here uh, because cost of deposits has also gone up, so there is yield, substantial yield increase or is there uh, a substantial increase in the size of the book? Yeah, sure. So uh, addressing to your first question, so actually revenues in the business have actually grown by 41%. Uh, on, on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, while broking revenue has grown by 32 percent. So, and and with this revenue increase of 41 percent, the people cost has actually grown by 31 percent uh, in our business. Now, this 31 percent growth also includes uh, upfronting of uh, the provision for our uh, variable payouts, uh, which we have actually uh, embedded in, in in quarter one and quarter two of this financial year, given the strong performance. Uh, of this year. So that is also one of the reasons where uh, you would see uh, a bit of higher proportion of the people cost coming in because of the higher uh, revenues on our investment banking business as well as institution equity uh, uh, revenues on the broking side. Uh, also, we continue to invest in talent, uh, especially on the technology side, on distribution side uh, of the business uh, and and uh, on, the, on our uh, PCB channel uh, because of which uh, we have been adding more senior talents also uh, overall on a last 12 month basis. Uh, that is also one of the reasons for uh, increase. But overall operating leverage wise, uh, it is up by almost 300 billion on a YOI business. If you look at our capital market segment, uh, if you calculate uh, the operating leverage uh, on the net revenue basis, that is up uh, by 300 basis on a YOI. So we'll we have, despite investing, we are continuing to improve our uh, operating leverage as well. Uh, coming to the uh, interest point, interest income uh, is, is up 90%. This includes, of course, uh, uh, increase on account. So marginally, the NIMS are up on a, in, in this quarter, uh, 
Uh, so we have a uh, passed on uh, impact of our uh, in interest increase uh, in, in last two quarters. We have been passing on that impact. And in Q2, we have actually improved our NIMS uh, by almost uh, uh, 65 to 70 basis points on our uh, uh, interest uh, uh, lending book. Uh, the lending book uh, comprised of uh, certainly uh, the margin uh, uh, trade financing book, uh, basically, where uh, there is uh, search. So why, why this is, uh, there is uh, increase in the uh, growth uh, of this book. This book has uh, almost uh, sort of uh, uh, increased or doubled. Uh, uh, given that uh, earlier uh, we were doing uh, IPO financing and that opportunity is not there now, uh, so given our strong balance sheet and net worth growth, uh, again, this gives us an opportunity to leverage, and that is one of the reasons where uh, we have increased our uh, lending to HMI clients, especially on our uh, the private client group channel and the franchising channel. Uh, that is resulting in increasing in our interest income. Yes, thank you, sir. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all participants, anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone. We'll take the next question from the line of Vignesh Ayer from Sequent Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, first is on the home finance uh, uh, side of the business. Uh, just wanted to know, uh, uh, we seem to be stabilizing in this year, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, the sector we cater to, uh, affordable housing, uh, uh, is showing a lot of traction. So what kind, what kind of uh, EM group can we expect from FI25 onwards? Yeah. Uh, so, second question on my side is, uh, our uh, balance sheet uh, shows cash of around 13,500 crores uh, roughly. Uh, can you tell me uh, how much of that cash actually belongs to the company and what is the cash uh, that belongs to the, our customers? Yeah, uh, thanks Vignesh uh, for your question. Uh, we, uh, as we uh, mentioned earlier, uh, we are uh, ramping up our uh, uh, sales force uh, from uh, around 500 uh, at the start of the year to uh, end at 1,000 uh, by the end of the year. And uh, we have been, uh, despite the fact that we've added a lot of people, we have been able to maintain our uh, productivity. And uh, and we are, of course, uh, in Q2 itself, we have seen our uh, disbursement grow in line with the added investment. And with the further maturing of our uh, stabilizing of the sales team, we expect the productivity to further improve. And uh, so, so uh, our uh, disbursement run rate uh, on the retail side should continue to grow in line with uh, with the addition of uh, sales capacity, and we uh, expect the AUM to grow accordingly on the on the retail side uh, for the uh, next year. Yeah, uh, coming to the question on the cash and cash equivalent. So, at the overall uh, uh, consolidated balance sheet level, uh, 2,900 crores of uh, cash and cash equivalent uh, pertains to our own uh, surplus cash. Uh, on the balance sheet, uh, rest uh, belongs to our uh, basically creditors and, and the business. Yeah. Okay, uh, sir. Uh, but uh, just if you could just uh, give a ballpark number of what AM growth is possible, like a 20-25 percent AM growth possible in FY25. Uh, we are, uh, while we are not uh, giving a, a guidance uh, right now, but uh, with the uh, expected growth in our disbursement number, uh, we expect a healthy trajectory of growth of AUM in the next year. Okay, sir. Okay. Uh, sir. Yeah, that, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, you may please press star and one to ask questions. The next question is from the line of Namit Arora from Ingrowth Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question was to Navin ji uh, on MOAMC. Uh, would be grateful for your thoughts on uh, you know efforts to enhance market share uh, uh, besides the growth of the market itself. Your thoughts on how you are focused on uh, trying to enhance market share for MOAMC. Uh, and secondly, your thoughts on this entire active versus passive debate. Uh, and uh, does the uh, AMC have a strategy to? capitalize on that opportunity as well in any fashion, uh, in a more aggressive manner, uh, active versus passive as well as ETFs and other products. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, as far as our mutual funds are concerned, uh, 
I highlighted to you that uh, our market share in uh, two of the categories uh, where the funds have been doing well for a while has already touched uh, 4% for the large and mid-cap category, 8% for the mid-cap category. Uh, this compares with the overall market share of 0.9% uh, uh, in terms of the share of AUM in the total outstanding equity AUM. Uh, I also highlighted that uh, we have been onboarded by the top three scale banks uh, uh, in the last few months. Uh, and that uh, is a process, uh, you know, when the, where the entire banking channel Pan India starts, uh, you know, selling these products. Uh, 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 even the larger category, which is the balance advantage uh, fund category, our fund is uh, among the highest ranked funds in one to three year time period there. Uh, so that's a large category as well. And finally, I highlighted that our flagship Lexi Cap uh, fund, which was market leader in that category at one point in time, has also on a one-year basis now started delivering alpha and uh, uh, is in the top quartile of performance. So uh, it is a very broad-based recovery combined with uh, onboarding by uh, both the retail channels, uh, national distributors and IFAs, as well as uh, by the banks and wealth channel. And so uh, that is reflected in improvement in gross flows reflected in the first quarter of uh, positive net sales. Uh, we think that uh, we have a long way to, uh, you know, go uh, as far as, uh, you know, the ramping up of the market share here. Uh, also, uh, I highlighted that bulk of our alternate asset products, uh, it's the founder strategy, value migration strategy, the mid to mega strategy, the business opportunity strategy, the India growth funds. I mean, across the board, each of the products uh, are performing top quartile and uh, we are seeing very strong uh, distribution onboarding there too. In fact, uh, uh, for the month of uh, September and October, even in the alternate space, uh, we have seen very strong uh, positive net sales uh, uh, when there is a slowdown in the overall market. So, uh, so uh, you know, the, the investment uh, philosophy has been pivoted to more sustainable performance and the max performances, I highlighted that. Uh, this is reflected in the performances of most of the mutual fund and alternate products, also reflected in the onboarding of the products by the various distribution channels. Uh, as I speak to you, our sales team size right now is almost 4x of uh, what this team size was when the AUM was similar, you know, four years back. Uh, so we have meaningfully invested in the sales and distribution infrastructure also, we've uh, opened a lot more new uh, branches. The digital channel is, uh, is contributing a lot more uh, this time around as well. So, just by way of context, in the last cycle, you saw the AMC grow from 1,000 crore AUM to 50,000 crores, uh, led by sustained five, six years of performance. Uh, we are hoping that, uh, you know, this 55,000 crore mark that we've reported for the end of September uh, is the beginning of this, uh, you know, uh, journey of the second phase of growth for the AMC. Uh, turning to the passive business, uh, there too, uh, you know, we have uh, we have a leadership position in the international funds. With our, we were the first to launch the Nasdaq and S&P 500 funds. Uh, we followed that up with a few other interesting international products. But after the, you know, RBI embargo on you know incremental investments. Uh, uh, we are nearly we are nearly capped out as far as that part of the passive business is concerned. And uh, over the course of the last uh, uh, seven quarters that this embargo has been in place, uh, we have launched a lot of interesting you know domestic passive funds, including factor funds, uh, sectoral funds, and so on. Uh, we are not really uh, you know getting into the debate of active versus passive. We believe that there is a lot of headroom uh, to grow both given just how underpenetrated, you know, uh, Indian, uh, you know, uh, financial savings are in the overall, you know, uh, wealth of the uh, Indian family. So, equities are currently less than 5% of the, you know, wealth uh, of Indian households, and this has a lot of headroom uh, to grow. So, uh, we are well positioned, whether it's mutual fund or alternates, uh, whether it is uh, active or passive, uh, with... Uh, strong performances across the board with much larger sales and distribution infrastructure and onboarding by the distribution partners. And we'll see how this shapes up, uh, but the headroom to grow is really uh, meaningful. Oh, got it. Thank you for your very detailed and candid thoughts. This is most helpful uh, and all the very best to the entire team. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah, on behalf of Motiral Aswal Financial Services Group, uh, I would like to thank every participant for attending the Q2 F524 on call. Uh, in case of any further queries, please do get in touch with us on our investors listen desk. Uh, thank you and have a good day. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, members of the management. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Motilal Uswal Financial Services, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.